people are actually meeting on behalf of the people's but they're not telling them. So when Doug Kesha and told us in that meeting, you know, to stay away from these corporations, we just went ahead and contacted them, made appointments with them because we wanted to let them know that this leadership was actually meeting with people and they were not even telling us. So we kind of gave them the heads up that there is a possibility that, you know, that everything they say can be voided under our original governance. And like Darlene was mentioning, um, that one paper, it was written by Eileen and Doug, and as it's, they're trying to like um, change the document into the 21st century, but to, it's to also accommodate them. So it's just BS, and like she said, you know, like at that meeting, she just put a big X right over it and said, you know, we don't acknowledge this, and that's pretty much what it was because none of us were actually told about it. And now we're in Cement Lake, and <clears throat> for economic development, is to purchase this hotel as a community, um, flip it, renovate it, make it, you know, something awesome, you know, turn this room to, you know, a community room, and, you know, work with the people in Cement Lake, or do what, do what you guys want. Whatever, it's blueberry canning, Nietzsche rides, you know, like a hotel, <coughs> ecotourism, golf courses, like whatever it is, there are formulas out there that will help us people um, generate money but it's actually community money it's not you know individual money so it's a formula where the community buys the the product and it kind of like generates itself but then the money goes back into the community where you know our kids can be included or elders can have you know elders funds kids funds you know travel funds anything that can be done you know business opportunities um, there's there's that opportunity about that hemp industry because hemp in Canada is becoming the number one, I guess you would say. Um, they have, like, I think last year they made like $900 billion in revenue alone, and that was in medicinal marijuana. So it's actually coming about, and I actually have been sending it down to Southern Ontario when they can't even help the people in Cement Lake, right? So I mean they're taking like two hundred thousand. I mean I keep saying two hundred thousand because I've seen that in one of the audits, but Cashman will probably challenge me on that. But there has been a lot of money from our community that has been misspent um, on their own. You guys have seen it. You guys know it. Um, we just have to prove it because, like Johnny said, you know, there's uh, Jim McKenzie from the director for the National Allegations of Indian Northern Affairs. Well, whatever. Um, they said that they want to have an update of what happened this weekend because they are willing to help and I did contact the OPP about two weeks ago just to let them know that charges will be filed in SOG with regards to fraud. Um, the criminal investigation unit has been notified down in Aurelia. Um, I can't. I, re I refuse to file complaints with Darrell and Mary because it's a conflict of interest for myself. I told the OPP I will not co converse with them or communicate with them because it's just not going to go anywhere. And they said okay, so there is an open file on them, so I, I don't have it with me, but we do have an actual open case, so we can actually. <sighs> That's it. I'm all dried up. <laughs> Next, the water. Fine, <laughs> grandmothers. And they still turn around and they still send a letter saying to Chapman, yeah, well, we still recognize you as chief. When technically, you know, we already said, you know, like, we don't recognize him. So either we fire them, like, you know, straight out, right, you know, like I, Nisha Dupuy, fire Edward Mishimini, Violet Hill, Eileen. Anyway, just fire them all because they have to clean house, man. I'm sorry, but I'm done supporting them. I've been supporting them for almost like 20 years now, and I think every single one of us has been supporting their lifestyle. And me personally, I would rather have it benefit, well, me, my family, and the people in the community. You know what I mean? Because it, it has to come, it has to happen. Because I mean, they've been doing it for like 20 years now. And right now they're bullying our people. They're making us believe that we're incapable of change, but I don't think so. 
I think they got it all wrong. They got it all twisted up. They got they have us believing that we don't have a voice and we don't have a say, but they don't have a say because they have no land base. All they have is a piece of paper. But we are the original title holders of the land in this territory. And we are the keepers of the waterways in this territory. Like right now in South Dakota, North Dakota, like they're fighting with their life to save the waters. And and these corporations, like they just want to come here and take it all and just contaminate it. Back in 2010, like, you know, Health Canada raised a red flag saying, you know, that the chromium mining is going to contaminate the waterways, it's going to create cancer, and it's, gonna, it's, it's, it's not cleanable. Like, you know, there's mines in India right now that they have, like, you know, like, experts from all around the world flying to India right now trying to clean the water over there. There's mass, evacu uh, mass evacuation. There, that's one option of looking at it, but then I was looking at another option. Okay, if I'm never going to get nothing from this reserve anyways, and my name is there, I signed the guy in, and I know some of my Indian Affairs money has gone in there. If nothing works like that, then I'm thinking of writing the ban a letter and saying, okay, from the time I signed into this ban to the present day right now, I want all that money back. I'm out of here if that's, you know, if it continues on as to not moving or having a change because those are the real options we got we gotta apply the pressure somehow and uh and fight for the people that way because why i kind of thought about that but I, but but again this is just a rumor <clears throat> with uh the youngest daughter of that family like she got uh, money at christmas time which is about about two thousand <coughs> <coughs> 2,000 I heard. 20,000? 20, 20, yeah. But anyways, this is what I heard. I heard it was 2,000 that she got this Christmas and she went and took a vacation with the Belmores in Winnipeg. But again, I don't know if that has any truth to it, but I'm just think, thinking that as uh, just an example, if it has any truth to it, and then, you know, why did she get 2000 Did she work for it hard or, you know, or is it simply because, you know, those things are under question. And I, and I say everybody should have got 2000 Christmas time if that were the case. That's how what I'm saying and looking at. So, and then all we got was 50 bucks and everybody was supposed to get 50 bucks. No, 100 bucks at the beginning. And then they chop and knocked it down to 50 bucks only. Mm -hmm. But everybody should have got 50 bucks anyways. You know what you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. And that's what I do like is that there are a lot of bright ideas that are happening. Like people do have ideas, but yet they just don't have the support to back them up. That's one of the things I do like and don't like. I know. Yeah. Like, if they're willing to give it to you, you know? Yeah, that's <coughs> Like you think about it, all their kids and all their grandkids yeah. had it all and yet nothing yeah. has come of it. They had a logging company, a store, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. And so they ran it into the ground all the time. One of the things that I don't like is that how in Sogdine, us band members that even live there feel like as if we don't even have rights as a human being. Right? Like we really don't. Like our medicals are denied and whatever else, and they don't even look at us as people. Yeah, and you guys are coming from the outside, but us on the inside, like we suffer. We, suffer we so actually much. suffer. <laughs> like even for this to go on, you know what I mean? So like we're gonna even get more suffering, you know what I mean? Like even though they have, uh, they already denied us all of our medical trips, our garbage, and everything else. But the next thing you know, we won't even be able to go into the buildings. Like, well, yeah, I know we can because none of them are open, you know what I mean? But they'll just tell us, you know what? Like, look at her, she was, um, just because of the other meetings, she wasn't even allowed to go on the van. They told her, oh, we wouldn't feel like it. You know what I mean? Like,